All right, everyone, welcome one, welcome all, episode 37 of the Casey and Tyler show. Uh, quick show for you guys today, going to obviously talk about some uh, sports news, sports updates, Kyrie Irving trade that occurred on Sunday, obviously big news there. Um, then we'll recap the Pro Bowl. Um, interesting format they did this year. We touched on that a little bit last show, but we'll kind of go through our thoughts um, and, and go through all that. Um, just trying to, you know, get, get some house uh our house in order before our show later this week where we'll primarily focus on the super bowl Dang. and some fun prop bets tucker wants to be involved in the episode i'm cool with that i'm cool with that um as always casey anything you like to say uh let's do it all right bet Casey, let's start first and foremost with the Kyrie Irving trade. Uh, obviously goes from Brooklyn Nets to the Dallas Mavericks. This was a little bit of a shock to me. I don't know about you. Um, this was a shock to me. Well, go ahead and go through what, what the trade was, and I'll, I'll give my I'll give my thoughts. So he got he gets traded to the Dallas Mavericks, the, the Nets trade, Kyrie and Markeith Morris, and the Dallas trade, Spencer Dinwiddie, Doran Finn. Um, Finney, Finney Smith, Jesus yeah. Christ, a 2017 second rounder, a 2019 first rounder no. that is unprotected. 2027, 2029. 2027, yeah, 2027 first rounder that is unprotected. Second rounder. And a 2029 second rounder. No, 2027 second rounder, 2029 first rounder unprotected, and then, yes, a 2029 second rounder. There we go. Okay, <laughs> you just whatever. had it all backwards. Whatever. It's all good. Um, for, for some people... Uh, they thought that this was a little bit like underwhelming. Like I thought maybe Kyrie would garner more. I think, and I'm going to speak freely because I'm not a Kyrie Irving fan. I think he's incredibly talented, but I think he's been a distraction and a cancer everywhere he's went. And um, I, I'm surprised with, with a good young core that the Mavericks had that they'd want to bring in this type of distraction. But I mean, obviously they're in win now mode. Kyrie is one one of the best guards in the league. There is no denying his talent. I just don't know. I mean, you hope, at, like as Mark Cuban, when you decide that you're going to bring someone like this in, that you don't disrupt any chemistry or any of like uh, the good things that you have going on the team. If he's going to come here and put his head down and just ball, it's going to be very good for the Dallas Mavericks and for Luka Doncic, obviously. Um, at the time of the trade, I was reading last night when we got home from volleyball that Right now, at least in Dallas's eyes, he's being viewed just as a rental. Um, they understand that they're going all in for a championship this year. They'll figure out whatever else after the season. My guess is if he plays well and it works out, I mean, they could maybe extend him, but maybe they, they just view this as kind of like when the Dodgers bought Manny Ramirez over in 08, that they know he's going to be a distraction, but if he plays well, the the winning the will yeah, the winning will will out oh, outweigh, excuse me. Yeah. Um, any any of the possible other things um, I also thought this was funny everybody thought that including my father that he was going to the Los Angeles Lakers I think uh, he texted you and placed a bet yeah, on the played, Lakers yeah. to, yeah, he had to, to win the bet on the Lakers to win it all because he thought Kyrie was gonna go there well yep. interesting enough um, Joe Desai he's the governor of the Brooklyn Nets kind of like head of basketball operations and their general manager he refused trade talks with L.A. apparently because he knew that's where Kyrie wanted to go. Uh, according to NBA reporter Mark Stein, one of the presumed objectives for Tasai was to move Irving somewhere other than his preferred de destination of the purple and gold. Um, and obviously that's ultimately what happened. That's just an ultimate you burn too many bridges here. I will send you to Antarctica before I send you to play for the Lakers. Like, he, right. That was not happening. Like, you're lucky <laughs> we sent you to Dallas. You're lucky we didn't send you to Detroit. Yeah, like we could have sent you to like I'm trying to think of like just who's like or Orlando. We could have sent you to the Magic. Yeah, you know, so or yeah, something like that. So, um, I thought that was interesting. Obviously, 
Like I, I can't say enough. Kyrie Irving's is cr- incredibly talented, and I, that's going to be about as good of a backcourt as you'll see. Um, Their odds with, went from, I think, in the two to three thousands because now they're sixteen plus sixteen hundred. Their current odds to win the, the yeah. championship, and you know they when you have a player like Luca, you it's you almost always have a chance to win it all. He's just that dynamic, and he shows up in the big games. Um, I think this will prove dividends, though. Like once you get into the playoffs and stuff, it's be really hard to double Luca when he can just give it to Kyrie. And obviously, they still got some other players over there. Uh, Christian Wood, former Piston, uh, good player, um, and then obviously Tim Hardaway Jr. Uh, so we'll see. I'm I'm sure because the trade deadline hasn't happened yet, right? It's this week. Yes, I think so. So I, I or it's I, coming I was, up. Yeah, I think. Like over the weekend, they said there was like six days left. So I think it. I think it's probably Wednesday or Thursday this week. Um, I'm assuming that there's going to be some other moves around the NBA. We'll see. Uh, Thursday. But yeah, this, Thursday. Yeah, this was this a Thursday. big one. This was a big one. Um, you know, hopefully it works out. I think you I mean you're a Luca fan, aren't you? I'm a Luca fan. Yeah, I like Luca a lot. I mean, I think it's going to go one of the two ways. It's either going to be, it's going to go really well for them, but it's going to be one of those things when the team has to face adversity and like they get their real true test and like their team doesn't play so well. How's Kyrie going to act in that situation? I also think that there's a, like all, obviously all eyes are on Kyrie Irving to see how he handles the situation, because I think teams around the league are going to take notice, especially if Dallas chooses not to sign him. Is that how did it go? How did he fit in? Was he able, like maybe Brooklyn really was just a horrible situation. I mean, it's just he doesn't play. You know what I mean? He just decides to sit out. I, there's just so many things that have happened with his tenure in Boston and in Brooklyn that have left – it's left a bad taste in a lot of NBA fans' mouths. You know what I mean? Right. So, well, it's like when he shows up, he's like, I'm here for the team. I'm here to win a championship. I'm going to be loyal. And it's like you play – you start playing bad, and the fans, like, start getting mouthy because you're in – Boston, which is a very passionate fan base, and you go to Brooklyn, which I'm pretty sure they're probably very passionate. Yeah. And it's one of those things where you, if you can't take criticism from fans, then why the why are you playing? I didn't realize Gunner was. <laughs> you didn't know he was there. there. He was I just noticed there. that. Okay, I think I was talking with my hands. I just went like, "What the heck?" Yeah, no, he's uh, been so That's why I was, I was laughing a second because I looked over and he's just looking at me. <laughs> um, but no, I think you're. I think you're totally right with the, like Kyrie's. It almost feels like. It, it, actions haven't uh he hasn't put his money where his mouth is he talks this big game about i'm here for championships i love this sport blah 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 and then all this off the field stuff you well, know I whether it was the, earlier Hold whether on. it was the vaccine or like him just saying like i'm not re- mentally ready to come back to the game yet and it's just like dude there's only so much you know who i feel bad for in this sense is kd i, I mean feel KD's really just bad been, for KD. he's just been left holding the bag like waiting for like what the heck happened you know what i mean whether it was James Harden, Ben Simmons. I know Ben Simmons is still there. And Kyrie, they've done, they've bent over backwards to help like put a supporting cast around KD, and none of these cats have worked out. Uh, what's his name? Kendrick Perkins said that there's going to be a 30 for 30 about the Nets because they're the best team in the NBA. It's like the be- the biggest disappointment in the NBA as a team. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah like I they would... had like the, like the uh, phenomenal play. Think about it. They had Kyrie. James Harden and Katie all on the same team and you didn't do anything. You didn't make it to an NBA final. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I totally agree. I think there, there are examples that like around, like, you know, there's, we could say it about the Yankees every year, you know, almost it's like, they have all the money in the world. They never, they never win anything. So um, I do think Kendrick Perkins is right. And I think if I was KD, I'd be like, Guys, I think you should trade me this offseason. I also want a fresh start. Like the franchise needs a reset, and so does. And well, the Net, you know what's funny? The Nets have been making big splashes. Like, remember when they traded for uh Paul Pierce and Kevin Garnett and yeah. the Celtics? Like they the Celtics because the Celtics, a lot of their six, current success is coming because yeah, of that I think trade. The G- Either Tatum or Brown, one of those Tatum. two was from, from the, the Nets. Nets. Yeah, it, it well, was dude, Tatum. from now, I saw something when I was looking up the trade for Dallas and Kyrie. I didn't know this. So only from now until 2017 or 2027, 2027, the Nets or the Rockets have control over all the Nets picks. Because of the Harden trade? Because of that Harden trade. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing about the NBA that gets really wonky is – 
like even when uh like the Lakers were like talking about trade package, like we'll give you our 2035 first rounder. It's like, well, how can you trade that far in advance? <laughs> it's crazy, like, but because you only get two picks a year and it takes a lot of capital to get one player. Right. So yeah, you can set yourself up. But if I'm the Nets, I'm like, bro, we're not waiting to win till 2035, brother. Like that's just not that's, no, it's, that's over a or, decade away. No, it's fucking ridiculous. Or it's like you're like, we'll trade you. We'll trade you this pick. It's unprotected unless it's like a top five. It's like there's so many like stimulations that like shit that you can add to it. It's like it's protected at a or it's or it's projected to be a get top five pick or a lot a lottery pick or it's like shit like that. Like this one's unprotected. What the fuck does that mean? That means so that what that means is is that if um if the somehow the Mavericks suck and they end up in the lottery pick, they don't get to retain it. So you can protect your picks and be like, hey, if it's a top five pick, oh, we get yeah, to keep we, it. Oh, yeah, we keep it, yeah. yeah. Yes, and then you, it, it defaults you get next year. So yeah. You know what I mean? So but this still, one's it's unprotected. Like, I, I, don't, I don't know. But another that's... thing, another thing, when you make trades like this, were w- you going to be picking in the back half of the first round? Because the Mavs are going to be seemingly competitive in, for the next – 10 years or so, you know, they have Luca. Well, if you think about it, they, they, they gave away a, what was the first round pick a 20, 29, 2029. So that's six years from now. I mean, they probably were like, okay, well maybe they they'll have a bad year. Yeah. Luca, yeah. Luca might, well, I mean, they, they might just have Luca or whatever. Well, they got the scripts, you know, how the NFL scripts, the NBA scripts said Luca's going to tear his ACL Dude, all, in 2029. All these fucking memes about the script. It's like, it's been uh, great. Glasgow Burris in 2019, 20, I saw that one. I saw that one. <laughs> I, saw, I saw one. It was a picture of Eli Manning, like with this like shit eating grin on his face. It was like him reading the script for the 2007 playoffs when he like takes down Brady, the undefeated. Was that 2007? Whatever the year the Patriots were undefeated when they played the Giants. 2011. Was that okay? So eleven. It was like this picture of Eli, just like this shitty grid. Like, like okay, we're gonna end up winning the Super Bowl, and beat the undefeated Patriots. I'm in. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Those, I mean, the, it, I don't think Arian Foster had any idea how big this was gonna blow up when he because oh, no. it has it has like I don't know like after 24 hours it had over five million views and Quigs from Barstool was like this was unintentional like the internet is just running with this and like you I said, mean, some people thought things, he was being serious i mean he's technically not wrong they every player does get a script on how the how their season's gonna be because they get a script of their playbook yeah that's the script of your season right yeah so he's technically yeah. not wrong i In thought these that situations so rewind we, we run these plays he just yeah he said it, so it's like you can take it as it's actually it's rigged. It's rigged, he yeah. It, he said it at the perfect time too. He knew exactly what he was doing. It was genius. But I like you're right. Like these things have blown up, blown up. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll see what happens with with the Mavericks and whatnot. I mean, I I know you're not a LeBron guy. I'm a LeBron guy. I wanted to see Kyrie. And oh LeBron yeah, and let's let's talk about let's talk about that little tweet that got sent out last night. Oh, when he said it must just be me or something like that. Yeah, maybe it's me. Twenty three hours ago, it is you. It is you, LeBron. I don't think he was talking about. Uh... Yes, he was. It can't happen. It's happened, it's happened right after nah. the Kyrie got traded. That he was hundred percent talking about that. It is you. Players don't want to play with you because you're a little bitch. I, everyone wants to play with LeBron, bro. No, because he's a little – yeah, because he's going to – refs love to suck his dick and put him in the Whoa. finals. That's why. You need to relax. Chill. Goodness gracious. I don't know why I even brought that up. That's just – You me. brought his name up. You know what happens every time you bring that pussy's name up. Dude, I've been a bleep all this out. You need to relax. Um, I know we didn't put this on the show sheet, but let's talk about where Purdue goes down. Uh, I would like to give a shout-out to our college basketball insider – Casey, who predicted this. Um, if you guys called it, us, it, called it. If if you guys don't follow us on TikTok, make sure you do because Casey will put out his picks or predictions um occasionally. So if you, you if you were following, you would have you would have been ahead of that bet. And yeah, Casey for sure called it. So shout out to our college basketball insider who's insider. super locked. I mean, super well, locked. I didn't do so the picks I gave out on Saturday, I went back and I looked it up. I didn't do the I didn't do so hot with the picks I gave out. I went three and four in the picks. Yeah, but the big one though. That was a big one. Indiana was a big one. 
I mean, yeah. it wasn't that big. No, they were tech. They were. I mean, it was only like, three it was like a one, yeah, it was like a point and a half, which is crazy. But um, so. there's nothing. I have to say this: college sports are awesome because seeing the kids rush the court—that's the that. coolest scene every time. Every time, and people want to bitch like Indiana has history; they shouldn't do that. They're kids. A lot, the last time they beat a number one team, none of those kids were still in school. It was 2013 like, was the last time. Right. So those kids, they've they've had four graduating classes since then. So right. um, just really cool. Really cool to see that. Assembly Hall is just a place stuck in the 1980s. I mean, that is. I, I it, love watching that's Indiana just, basketball. I, you, when you watch those games, it's like. That's not an arena. That's just a gym. It's a you gym. know what I mean? It's just a gym. And uh, the fans are just right on top of you. Uh, that was great to watch. That was great to watch. You know, down goes Purdue, down goes number one. That's what the beauty of college basketball is, man. It's so volatile week to week. Yeah. Yeah. Follow us on TikTok and Instagram, Casey and Tyler Show. I'll be giving yep. out weekly picks. Yep. Uh, uh, I'm definitely every Saturday and every Sunday for like kind of the bigger games and throughout the week, if I can find time well, throughout my work day. To, I say if, if, to step if something out, comes I mean, up. Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you have like a strong feeling on a game, I feel like you typically try to. Oh, no, I'll definitely do the weekends for sure. Cause I can, I'll have time Friday night to do this, some research on shit. It's yeah. more of during the week is hard because I have to find time early enough in the day to record the video when I'm like, I'm not going to do it at six, six in the morning. Yeah. Also like you're kind of flying by the seat of your pants in the week. You get home, the half and feet game on, you might throw some action on it, but that's just a gut. Oh, feeling, well, no, right? I'm talking about, if I'm going to get my picks in for a video and I'm going to do it like middle of the day. So it's just people have time to watch. Time. It. Yeah. Cause I'm not going to, yeah. if I, I mean, if I post a video at six o'clock at night and the game's at seven not many people are well going to be able to watch right we're not viral enough yet for for yeah, that we're not, to we're not that we're not there yet so well, I, it I needs to, time to to get out into the world yeah, and, and I reach to, like, some people record it at, at my break post it on my break so it has several hours like i did one tonight i um bet the under in the texas kansas game under 147 oh that's on tonight isn't it obviously you just said nine. that nine yeah, yeah. Or last night, since we're record, since we're posting tomorrow, last night. Yeah, last night it was. Yeah, I so forgot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. Let's move on. Uh. B- former Miami's Dolphins head coach Brian Flores will be the next defensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings. This was a big deal, obviously, with all the crazy stuff that went down with him as a Dolphins head coach. Ends up getting let go. He spent uh, this most recent season as the Pittsburgh Steelers senior defensive assistant and linebackers coach. Um. Atlanta, or Minnesota was really bad. I think they were 31st in all defense this year. They were they were not great. Um, and uh, they've kind of done a uh, coaching staff overhaul this offseason. Uh, Kevin O'Connell, and uh, who's the head coach of the Vikings, uh, and Brian Flores have a previous relationship. Uh, when O'Connell was drafted by the New England Patriots as like their backup quarterback or whenever he was drafted there, um, Brian Flores was the special teams assistant coach, I believe. So, um, I mean, I, I like Brian Flores. I do too. I think I he's think a great. What coach. happened to him in Miami was a shitty situation. Shitty what happened to him. I mean, yeah. honestly, what was I? I don't want to laugh about it, but like, what was funny was like he didn't even know. Like he like got texted that he got the job in New York. Was it the Giants' job? Yeah, uh, by Bill, Bill Belichick Belichick. texted the wrong Brian. <laughs> <laughs> that was i think bell checked it down purpose i think he was i think that was mental warfare but yeah um, like, the whole dolphins bet pats thing yeah yeah uh well especially because there's all the rumors that like brady was gonna go there oh and all right. that stuff so um yeah i'm looking forward to i mean you know i like like i said i like brian flores and i, I expect him to get another head coaching gig at some point um, it sucks that he's going to a place within the division, obviously. And, but I, I do think that's a massive upgrade, um, uh, as, as, as a DC for them. So, um, that'll be interesting to watch. That was the only other coaching update that happened this year, this week. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, one other thing I didn't put this on there, but it does sound like Aaron Gwynn is going to be back with the Detroit lions. Uh, he had like another interview with the Cardinals and it sounds like they've mutually agreed. At least what I read uh, was it sounds like he's not the front runner to be the Cardinals head coach anymore. Right. Uh, so that's good. We're going to retain uh, pretty much our entire staff besides Deuce Staley leaving for um, 
the yeah, Panthers. that was the that was the only thing. I don't know if we that happened. We didn't we didn't talk about it, so I guess we bring up Do Staley, running back coach uh, and assistant head coach for the Detroit Lions, will join Frank Reich and Carolina. Makes sense. Do Staley is their was OC, with, right? I think he's going to be their OC. Frank Reich will call the plays because he's like an offensive minded head coach. Yeah. I just think he'll get the title as offensive coordinator, so he'll help do the game plan throughout the week. He was with Frank Reich when Reich won the Super Bowl in Philly um, as the Phillies head uh, assistant coach, uh, offensive coordinator under Peterson, I believe it was. So they have a previous working relationship. It's not entirely shocking, um, but it is and it is a little bit because you wonder, was there bad blood? Like, did he not get a raise and he expected? I don't know. No, I don't know if we'll ever find that out. But the one thing it, it does tell you, it's not like he left for the rant. He, he has a previous relationship with this guy. And if it's if it's not just a lateral move, like if he is getting like a title boost, it makes sense for his career. So yeah. I can, you know, he wasn't going to become the offensive coordinator here. And I wonder if that was part of the conversations when they brought Ben Johnson back. I wonder if he said, like, if he goes, I'd like the job. And I wonder if Cable's like, now nah, we're going to bring someone else in. And I wonder if he's like, okay, well, I'm going to go take, I'm going to. I'm going to go be the OC somewhere else then. So right. um, good for Deuce Daly. He was awesome on Hard Knocks. Him and Aaron Glenn going at it. Um, appreciate your time in Detroit. Thanks for, uh, you know, thanks for your everything, whatever. Thanks for a good offensive yeah. year. Um, you put this in the show sheet. Uh, per Jeremy Fowler from ESPN, Lamar and the Ravens could be at least $100 million apart. I think they're going to franchise I think that's Adam. I think that's more of a guaranteed thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like like what they, like happened last time. They offered him 250 with like 100 and something guaranteed, and it's like he wants his full thing guaranteed. I'll guarantee you that's probably what he means by the 100 million off. So yeah. I wouldn't think that they would offer him a hundred or 250 million, and he was like, "Oh, I want 350." Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's more of that. I think it's probably more of a and guaranteed money and guaranteed money. That's probably what they're off. I think they're going to franchise tag them, even if they don't get it done. That's kind of the the thing in the NFL you can do. Like, yeah, well, we'll franchise tag you. And then Lamar has to decide if he's going to play on a franchise tag or not. Um, you know, you got to try and get it done. I, it, it's going to be interesting to see what, what the Ravens, the Ravens are a, a top tier organization. Um, they'll or handle do, this. Do you trade but, for uh, Justin Fields? If that's a possibility, certainly. Um, I think with a quarterback like Lamar, his window is certainly smaller than someone like Patrick Mahomes just because mm -hmm. of the nature and the style in which he plays. Um, so I think if I'm the Ravens, I'm keeping that in mind. Like, I don't like, yeah, he's great. He's an MVP, but how much treads left on those tires? And do you think you can get over the ultimate hump? And can you win with him, especially in that division, especially in that conference? So um, I, I, I trust the Ravens will do this the right way, whether that's moving on with Lamar or not, because like I said, they're just a, a first rate organization when it, you know, they're been steady for almost my entire life. Right. So um, that'll be interesting to see. I also find it very interesting. Lamar doesn't have an agent. He does this by himself with his mom. So maybe it's time he calls Scott Boris and says, I need a deal done. I don't know. I know Scott Boris is a baseball guy. This is the first agent that came to mind, but right. um, I do find that interesting that he doesn't, um, he does all the negotiations by himself and with his mother. Um, I mean, so if I'm the Ravens it. and if you're that far off, I'm calling I'm, Chicago. Yeah, I'm calling I'm Chicago and, and just it, seeing what it's going to take, because it's like, if, I mean, if it's not going to be much to get Justin Field, if they, if especially if Chicago wants to move on and they're like, Bryce Young is going to be our guy at one. I would do yeah. that because you're getting a younger guy. You're getting a guy that it's pretty much almost, yes, I'm not saying Justin Fields is a Lamar Jackson, but they're the same exact style of QB. I might go as far to say that I think Justin Fields is a more elite runner than uh, Oh, Lamar okay. Jackson. I was talking more of like overall. Oh, he's not the same player. caliber. No, he's too young. Because he's too young. But Lamar is definitely a better passer than Justin Fields in my at, opinion. At this point in his career, I would agree. Yes. I would also say that it would be intriguing if you're the Ravens because you wouldn't – like he can come in and you don't have to change any scheme. Like they've yep. built that offensive line to be a running offensive line. Their center is great at – with a running quarterback like it like it's it's different the way because they have a lot more guards that play tag it's just they you have to scheme it differently and if you bring a guy like justin fields it's just plug and play right and you're so, getting a younger guy and and on a rookie deal 
and on a rookie deal, and he's most likely going to, I would say, pro- might be less than what Lamar is going to be asking for. Yeah. Or you know exactly what he's going to be by the time that rookie deal is up to where it's, you know what you're getting yourself into with this guy Lamar. Is yeah. All, I want this all guaranteed money. Fields might not be that way. Who knows? You know, what? what's interesting, too, and what adds like a whole other dynamic to this Lamar Jackson saga is that obviously he wasn't healthy at the end of the year. So if you're the Ravens, you have questions about that too. Like, is there any lingering effects? Like, and even if you know there's not, it does give you a higher bargaining position because you're like, you didn't even play that. You didn't play the last six games last year. I don't, we don't know. Um, Yeah, we're supposed to guarantee you 250 mil. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. And, you know, or whatever it is. A lot of uh, GMs across the league are looking at the Browns and Deshaun Watson like, you really screwed up the quarterback. No, they market. did. Like, the whole like, 100% guaranteed contract. You really got, screwed everything every up. Every quarterback is going to, like, want that Deshaun deal to where it's all their money's guaranteed. And it's okay. Well, that's not going to happen. No. That Deshaun no. deal is most likely a one and done type of thing. And if you yeah. think that you're going to get that, like, you're stupid. You're and you're gonna run yourself to where it's like you don't play a game in the NFL ever again, and then you're gonna make the you're gonna try to make the like the NFL and all the all the owners are all all like these greedy fucking bastards. I mean, yeah, they fucking are, but it's don't swoop down their their, their level. Yeah, I, I it's gonna be interesting to see what because that like I said, they could franchise them, they could trade them. Uh, they, I, they won't just release him. I mean, they'll get something for him. Even, yeah. I mean, I, I would have to think that. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. I'm sure there's going to be more going forward and, and I'm super, super excited for the Super Bowl, obviously, but just the NFL off season. Uh, we haven't had a meaning, like a meaningful off season in Detroit in what feels like a really long time where it's like, yeah, we're not just adding some guys to fill depth. Like we're we might go get some dogs, and I'm looking right. forward to that. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I got nothing else besides obviously the Pro Bowl, but I got nothing else. I okay. mean, unless you want to talk about volleyball yesterday. Yeah, we can do that quick. I mean, look, we almost won. We almost won. So we played. That's so we the played... Clo- we that's the first dude. It was 24 24, first to 25. Yeah. We were like, hey, hey, dude, listen, we were down like three, and then Casey serving, go probably get six, seven straight points. We get into the 20s. I'm like, Casey's about to take it the whole way. I was getting so hyped, and then Casey felt bad, quit picking on one of the guys on their team when he could have just kept exploiting them, and we would have won. No, I no, I did that at the beginning of that first game. I I because I honestly. I pro- if I would have went at that guy the entire time, we probably would have twenty five zipped him. Dude, dude, you looked at you like I can't do it again. I'm like, can't it do him again? No, because I know how they, they I know do how it to me. Feels. I I well, once I saw that they started doing it to you, I was like, fuck that. I'm going at that guy every single time now. Yeah, but I never had the opportunity because every time I was serving, he was off the court. Yeah, they uh, that's probably the best team in the league though. One no, of them. the set the second team we played was. Oh, that's sorry. That's what I was thinking of. The second team we played is probably the best team in the league, and they didn't even have their best. The, yeah, best they were the best team probably because behind. they have they have those two guys that can spike it. Like even the volleyball girls as good as they are. I mean, I just think that because uh, well, that yeah. we played them that one time, and there was that guy in the Chippewa shirt, and he was bald, and mm-hmm. he was like, "It's like relax, dude, spiking it at me like that. Relax. You guys are up." 15 points yeah and you're it's hitting not as hard serious. as you can at it's me, not dude. that serious it was like yeah. i'm t- I, i'm telling you this right now if we ever run come across just like that first team we played that really tall tall guy met the come see shit like there was one time he hit the ball pretty hard and i'm like dude I, i'm like i will jump out of the way i'm not getting in front of that and like i'm you not to, i'm not like, getting a broken talk, nose yeah. and if you try to talk shit i'll call you a pussy to your face and be like dude we're playing a wreck thing what are we competing for? Yeah, there's not a trophy or a prize at the end. And if there is, we're not going to get it anyway. So yeah. why do I care? Yeah. yeah, why are you trying hard against the worst team in the league, buddy? You know, I, I find it funny because I that first game, like I said, we played, we were one point away from winning. It was an intense, very intense game. And I think like then we had to sat, we had to sit for like a half hour before our next match. I think we were just so dejected. We and we knew like we went we had zero juice in our, in that last game. Oh yeah, we didn't care. We had zero juice. Oh, we got 10 minutes. Um so that was tough. 
that was tough. But hey, we're getting better every week. We're getting better every week. We have next this upcoming week, we do have the early games. Bree said something about us going out to eat afterwards to get a drink. I'm like, no. We got I don't think I, I don't have time. Yeah, because we that's already what I said. have 40 I like, minutes. I have to get... Yeah, I was like, yeah. we got plans for the Super Bowl. I was like, we have to make sure we're back for that. I was like, we, we can go. Probably and I don't want to be rushed. After. Yeah, yeah week after would be fine, but I don't want to be rushed. And like, because then, and then, it, it, no, no. It's way. nice that we have the early game. It's like one in one forty, so it's like yeah. we should even we should be back by three thirty at the latest. Yep, yep. And then uh, where the if the party we're going to or whatever, it, people can start showing up at four thirty or whenever they want. So we have, we'll have ample time we don't what time's the game 6 30 6 30 yeah yeah and it won't even start at 6 30 you know that that's when they're gonna run out of the field with all the yeah that's when they run out of the field and they're at the national anthem or the national anthem will be at like 6 30 are you betting the under i don't know i i it's i might because i heard country artists they love going under but it's also but it's chris stapleton who knows I feel like he's going to be taking his sweet time with that. That's what I mean. It's like they're saying the country the country artists, every time they sung the national anthem, they're four and nine and going in the under. But it's your Chris Stapleton. He, I could see him like making it go a little, a little bit longer than 205. Yeah, I I take the over. I think. All right, let's 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 jump into the. We'll say we'll we'll save our prop bet talk for later this week. Um, Pro Bowl recap, Casey, different format. Uh, you want to run them through? Yeah, so it looks what, what like they did. So they did some um, of skill challenges throughout the week. Thursday, they had a dodgeball game, a lightning round. I, I honestly don't know what that was. The what? Um, the lightning Sorry. round. Yeah. Right. I have no idea what the events were, what what they actually did. I didn't really watch it like that. They had a longest golf. drive thing, and they had a precision passing thing. The AFC That's... won. Three of the four events on Thursday, so they were up nine to three heading into Sunday. Oh, and they also yeah, they then, got three points for each category they got. They that they, they won. won. Yep. Yeah. And then Sun. Well, Thursday they started this, but they finished it Sunday, and then all the rest were on Sunday. They had a best catch, a gridiron gaunt- um, gauntlet, a kick tack toe, move the chains, and they had three flag football games. Yeah. AF NFC won. Uh. Three of them, AFC won three of them. AFC went into the last flag football game up 21-15, and then the NFC ended up winning 35-33. Yeah. From what it sounds like, uh, at the beginning of the week, there were some mixed reviews. Like, I know Josh Jacobs came out and said, like, this shit's stupid. But by the end of it, all the players, that all the interviews I saw, everything I saw on Twitter, they're like, that was actually a lot of fun. Um, and and uh, who was the quarterback? I think it was Derek Carr was talking about how competitive the flag football games got. And he was like, it was fun. I mean, you they, people were getting hit a little bit. Like, so. Like, yeah, Jalen Ramsey hit someone. Dude, yeah. I was like, you need to relax. You know what I, I mean? I think it was one of those things where, like, he was running over to try to do it. And it was just like. He couldn't I mean, stop himself. Yeah. I was yeah. like. He did a truck stick the guy, but he ran into him. For yeah. Sure. Was- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I thought it was funny. It was cool seeing them all uh, mic'd up. Derek. Car was like, ah, this is the hottest I've ever been in Vegas, which was kind of a shot at his former team. No, and he team. was like, he was like, that's why I'm leaving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then uh, Devonte Adams just openly recruiting Aaron Rodgers, being like, I'll buy you a house, like no problem. Come, come, hang out in Vegas. It's groovy here, baby. So, right. <laughs> um, I thought that was great because obviously Rodgers was at the Pebble Beach Pro Am. He wasn't there, so he's kind of. Did talking you hear to the, the person ask him a question? They're like uh, Devonte Adams. He has like there. He has a house for sale next to him, or has a house yeah, in Vegas. Yeah. And he's like, tell him to buy it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I thought that was great. So I thought they did a good job with the Pro Bowl. Obviously, we kind of talked about it. they had to change their format up. Like I, it just didn't make sense having a bunch of players tackle each other after a long year. Um, but it's funny after well, we talked about it, Karen. Well, yeah, and then that when it gets even more dangerous too. Like yep. if you're not playing at a hundred percent, then you're going to get hurt. Gonna, but yep. it, we talked about that Sean Taylor hit. I looked it up after last episode. I in a Pro the, Bowl, he hit just took someone's of someone. head off. Yeah, boom. Um, <laughs> so that was good. I, it was cool to see like a Monroe St. Brown won the best catch. It was Michael Vick threw it to his brother, who then threw it to Monroe, who did like a front flip and caught it. That was pretty cool. Um, just good to see a lion showing out in the Pro Bowl. Yep. I and mean, what are we doing here? So uh, that was fun. Also, really cool. Real quick, and we only got five minutes left here, but. Um, think it's awesome to see golf 
like the game of golf growing with these um, all-star games. They had a longest drive at the NHL all-star yep. game. I was just about and to then say they, that. they do it here for the NFL. That just shows you how big golf is getting and how many other athletes just love playing the sport. So I thought that was super cool. Who won the um, Pro-Am? I know Aaron Rodgers and the one guy won, but who won the uh, Justin Rose finished it up today. First, he first did. win for Justin Rose in four years. Yep. So because of the weather delay, they had to finish it up this uh, that's morning. What I th- that's what I thought. And yeah. So uh, yeah, he won. I think he won by two shots. It was, it was a good tournament. They, their field just gets decimated because they're in between the farmers, which is at Torrey Pines and then waste management is this week. So a lot of players took this week off. Oh well, yeah. I mean, I uh, too. Yeah, the travel they want to get to Arizona early. It's going to be packed down there, obviously, with it being not only waste and management. Take a week, break because waste management is the first um, designated event. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll be watching that. It, I love the waste management open. Are we going to see a hole in one at sixteen? Yes, I agree. I agree. I want to bet that. I want to bet that. Bet it then, pussy. I think I'm. Go- I think I'm going to. But okay, all right. That does it. That That's does the show. it. That's the That's show. It. Yeah, we don't, have, we, don't have, we don't have the music. I forgot. Do, do, do. Love you guys. Do, do, do. See you guys. Peace. Online.